This is section 9.6 about capacity. When we talk about units of capacity, these are generally used to measure liquids. For example, the number of gallons of gasoline, number of cups of water needed in a recipe, and the number of quarts of milk sold each day at a supermarket. These are all examples of using units of capacity. And capacity is the same as volume. In fact, we usually use the word volume instead of capacity. So here are some U.S. units of volume or capacity. We have 8 fluid ounces equals 1 cup, 2 cups equals 1 pint, 2 pints equals 1 quart, and 4 quarts equals 1 gallon. And here are the unit fractions that go along with all of those. We're going to be converting again from one unit to another, so we will be using those unit fractions to do that. If we want to convert from pints to cups, then we need a fraction that relates pints and cups. So we would know that 2 cups is equal to 1 pint, so we can write a fraction using these two values, and we want pints to go on the bottom since that was our original unit, and we want cups to go on the top since that's the unit that we're trying to get to. So our unit fraction would look like this. Now we're going to multiply 10 pints, we're putting that over 1 again, times our unit fraction. And again, if we've done this correctly, our units will cancel out there and we'll be left with the unit that we're trying to get. Now we just multiply straight across, so on the top we have 10 times 2 cups, and on the bottom we only have 1's, so we're just going to write this in a whole number form, and that just gives us 20 cups. Let's look at how to convert 5 pints to fluid ounces. If you look at the equations we have, we don't have one that directly relates pints and ounces. So this is going to have to be a two-step problem. And I say two steps because first, we're going to have to go from pints to cups. And second, we're going to go from cups to fluid ounces. So let's go from pints to cups. Our equation that relates pints and cups says that 2 cups equals 1 pint. So if we're starting with pints and we want to convert to cups, then we would use the fraction that has pints on the bottom. So this would be the unit fraction we would use. So here we have our 5 pints times 2 cups over 1 pint. And again, we're putting this one over 1. Our units cancel out. So we have 5 times 2 cups on the top. We just have 1's on the bottom. So that gives us 10 cups. Now we're going to go from cups to fluid ounces. And our equation that relates these, those two says that 8 fluid ounces is equal to 1 cup. Again, now we're starting with cups, we're going to fluid ounces, so we want the fluid ounces on the top, we want the cups on the bottom. So we're taking what we got from the last one, 10 cups times 8 fluid ounces over 1 cup, putting that over 1, and our cups cancel out, so now we're going to be at ounces, which is where we were wanting to go. We just have 1's on the bottom here again, so 10 times 8 is 80, and we end up with 80 fluid ounces. Now let's go from quarts to gallons, and in this one we're going to round to the nearest tenth of a gallon. So our equation that relates quarts and gallons says that 4 quarts is equal to 1 gallon. So the fraction that we want would have quarts on the bottom, and gallons on the top. So we're taking our 26 quarts over 1 times 1 gallon over 4 quarts. Our quarts cancel. And then on the top we have 26 times 1 gallon. And on the bottom we have a 4, actually a 1 times a 4. So we end up with 26 
gallons over 4. Now to get this to the nearest, nearest tenth of a gallon, that means that we're going to actually have to divide this. So if we divide 26 by 4, it goes in there 6 times, and then we get 24. If we subtract, we get 2. Now to get to the nearest tenth, we may have to go to the hundredth place. So let's go one more place here. Here we get a 5, and if we subtract that, we get a 0. So this turns out to be 6.5. We don't have to go out to another place because we were done there. So this ends up being 6.5 gallons. Now, if a recipe calls for 2 and 3 eighths cups of milk, we want to know how many fluid ounces this is. So we're going from cups to fluid ounces. And that means we want to use an equation that relates cups and ounces. Well, the one that we have says that 8 fluid ounces is equal to 1 cup. Now we want an equation with cups on the bottom, since that's what we're starting with here. So we're using 8 fluid ounces over 1 cup as our unit fraction. So what we're going to end up with is our 2 and 3 eighths cups over 1 times 8 fluid ounces over one cup, and our cups do cancel, so now we have two and three-eighths times eight fluid ounces on the top, and we just had one on, ones on the bottom. Now remember to multiply, if you have a mixed number, we need to convert this to an improper fraction. So to do that, we would take the two times the eight, that gives us sixteen plus three is nineteen, so that would actually be 19 eighths. We have that times 8 fluid ounces. If we write this over 1, then we have 19 times 8 fluid ounces over 8 times 1. Well, we can go ahead and cancel the 8s here. So we're just going to end up with 19 fluid ounces. Now, we, when we talk about metric units of capacity or volume, the basic unit in the metric system for volume is the liter. And this is the volume of a cube that measures 10 centimeters on each side. So it would be how much water or liquid it would take to fill up this particular cube. Most common units of capacity in the metric system are the milliliter and the liter. And again, since we're working with the metric system, we have our same prefixes, and again, Everything in the metric system goes by powers of 10, so we only have to move the decimal point in order to convert from one to another. Here's our list of units. We're starting with kiloliters, going all the way down to milliliters. For example, if we wanted to convert from milliliters to liters, we would count over. This would be three decimal places to the left. So let's use this to convert 5,350 milliliters to liters. So we would take are 5,350 and count three places to the left. So we'd start here, count over three places, and that would give us five and thirty-five hundredths of a liter. So let's do some conversions here. And again, let's write our list of units up here. So there are our seven units in a row. Now if we want to go from liters to centiliters, then we're starting here and counting over to the right two places. So if we have the 3.2, we're going two places to the right. That puts the decimal point right there, and we have to put another zero in there. So that gives us 320 centiliters. Now if we're going from milliliters to hectoliters, we're starting here and counting to the left, one, two, three, four, five places. So we start with our 1800, our decimal point starts there, We're going one, two, three, four, five places to the left. We have to put a zero in here for a placeholder. So we have zero, another zero after the decimal point. And notice that we could also write this without these two last zeros, so we could also write this 
this way and just make it 18 thousandths. Now what if we're going from kiloliters to milliliters? If we're starting with kiloliters, then we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six places to the right. So to start with, our decimal point is right after the six. We want to go one, two, three, four, five, six places. So we're going to write in a zero for each one of those. So we wrote in six zeros there. And I don't even know if there's room for, the, for me to write this in here. So we have six million milliliters. <laughs>